So WIMP stands for what? Weakly Interacting Massive Particle. And the supersymmetric partners provide a class of candidates that fit that particular description and could be the dark matter. Yeah, I mean, several of the, of the, um, of the particles that Mary Angela was already talking about could yep. be WIMPs. So if this is a viable possibility, the key thing, of course, is to go out and find these particles. And that is something that we've been trying to do for a while. So Marianne, can you take us through the, the approaches that people have put forward to try to actually capture one of these particles or, or create one of them? Or sure, whatever? yeah. So with, with WIMPs in particular, there's a, a three-pronged approach. So the first being, let's try to produce it in the lab. Um, and in that case, you look at um, some really powerful collider, um, like the Large Hadron Collider, where you take two protons and you collide them together at really high energy, and you hope that in that high energy collision, you might actually be able to produce some new heavy exotic state that might be the dark matter particle. So using the energy of the incoming particles and equals mc squared, you want to transmute that energy into these exotic Folks. That's right. And in some sense, if we can create this in the lab, that's the best scenario, because then it's in a controlled environment. We could go in and we can really study the, you know, and get at the particle physics properties of that particle. All right. How's that going? Um, we haven't seen it yet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not for want of trying really, really hard. Right. <laughs> okay. And, and we're still, still trying, right? It's not as though the game is over, but that's so right. far, that's nothing. Right. I mean, the, the LHC has been running for the last few years um, and will be continuing to, to run so far. We haven't seen anything, but you know, people are, you know, there's going to be more data and people are coming up with new and creative ways of analyzing it. So we never know when that surprises. So that's one up. approach, trying to actually create it in the laboratory, mm -hmm. other approach. The other approach um, is uh, to, to look at for it in the sky. So to look, if, I'm sorry, what? To look for it in the sky. Yes. So if you have two dark matter particles that interact, um, they could sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes, produce a little flash of light. Right. Um, and so you can look for this annihilation process um, by searching in parts of galaxies where you expect that there might be a lot of dark matter and see whether or not there's an excess of light over what you would have otherwise have expected to see. Right. Um, and, how, and how's that going? Um, uh, also, uh, the lots of data. We haven't seen it yet. Um, again, not for want of trying really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Joe, do you, uh, would that be your assessment? The beautiful point of this argument is that the very same effects that stop these particles being created in the early universe still give you a value of of their interactions, if ever they could find one another, they would produce, again, a flash of gamma rays, actually, yep. a, a cascade of quarks and whatever. And so the trick is, you look in the vast depths of galactic space, um, the volumes are so large that you can look for the accumulation of these rare events, and look for gamma rays. Um, you can see here the gamma ray sky as measured by... Just remind us what gamma rays are, just to be... Uh... Okay, they're photons which are thousands of times more energetic and penetrating than X-rays. Good. Okay, they're um, hundreds of MeV, X-rays are KeV. So really, really hard photons produced in nuclear explosions. I mean, if, if ever you're unfortunate enough to be near a nuclear explosion, then you would be rated by gamma rays. Uh, that would be one of the, the more catastrophic things that could happen to you. But fortunately, the gamma rays um, don't get through the Earth's atmosphere. That we, we look for them from satellites in space, so, uh, and there they can penetrate, can propagate freely. And so in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, which is where the dark matter mostly accumulates, um, you would expect there to be a slight excess of gamma rays if the dark matter is indeed um, the, the WIMP type of dark matter.